be seated. We can get started with the, tonight's uh, program. Thank you. Don't be shy. You can come on and there's plenty of seats up here in the front. Please, we've got plenty more seats over here in the uh, stage right, your, your left-hand side. Well, good evening, everybody. How's everybody doing tonight? Yes? Good? We can do better than that, right? All right, there we go. There's some good energy. Well, welcome to the 2023 Excelling in Leadership Conference Welcome Reception and Mentorship Class of 25 Graduation. We're excited to be with all of you, our honored guests, sponsors, and valued, valued Excel members. We are grateful for your continued support and partnership with us. At this time, I would like to invite a man who needs no introduction because everybody here knows who he is, Jason Wong, founder and president of Excel, to give an opening speech. Jason. <clears throat> Jason. Kim, would you like to come up here and give a speech on the Jason's behalf? <laughs> Everybody give it a hand for Kim Ho, please. Kim has known Jason long enough. She knows what he would say. So you guys have probably had coffee with me. That's why you're here. <laughs> also, I was gonna ask you, is that right on your, is this supposed to be Tony, or is Tom actually your middle name? Tom is my middle name. I didn't know that. Wow. Cool. Good filibustering. <laughs> <laughs> People don't know what that means, they're not attorneys. Good stalling. <laughs> <laughs> um, welcome everyone tonight. I know that we have a lot of mentors, mentees, and the people supporting them in this room. Um, we know that we can't do this journey alone, and I am a former mentee, that's actually how I came to Excel. And um, I think it's actually one of our most important programs that we have. Uh, the relationship that you guys have created here and what you'll bring into the future is really what Excel is about and really what our community is about. So thank you for coming. We're excited to celebrate each and every one of you and hope that relationship lasts far more, many more years than just tonight uh, and the nine months that you guys have to spend together. So if Jason has any additional words, he can <laughs> come and say them. Perfect segue to Jason <laughs> Yeah, she probably do a better job than me. Thank you, Kim. Let's get her um, I, I have to confess, I was out there trying to cheat because I didn't <laughs> try it, so I was like, enjoy it. And, it's, and then my sister, Lisa, said, What are you supposed to speak? Stop eating. <laughs> but uh, anyway, um, I hope you all enjoyed today. We have a you know great lineup of speakers, and tomorrow we're going to have more. Um, I think that uh, very important for us as a community organization, we always wanted to make sure that we'd be able to give back. Um, the way that we still give back is always wanted to uh, have the opportunity to um, share the success from all those Asian American professional that you know, you know, with, you know, within Arizona or outside Arizona, they can share the uh, knowledge and best practice to our next uh, future leader. And uh, being part of it. Um, being part of this conference, uh, being an organizer, we actually got the easy pass 
for those of you who are speaking today or you know being part of the panel being speaker you are a role model so you have a lot more responsibility than i do so for that i wanted to thank you all of you that who are participate and um, for many people who attend and support our organization throughout the year i um, cannot thank enough um, um, the other thing is, um, you know, we are volunteer organization mostly, other than myself. But um, you know, so that um, many of them they power a lot of time to want to make sure that um, help this community grow. Um, so this past year, since the last time I spoke to many of you at a conference, um, uh, we do have a uh, quite a few development. Some of the things that we do, um, uh, building new program, and I think you have heard um, that we have this uh, a cell woman leadership program called Accelerate Women. And we also um, about to launch another program. I'm not gonna try to take you know take the thunder from Philip, but uh, but it's uh, focusing on executive alliance and bringing the uh, high level um, uh, leader that come together to uh, be able to find a way to support each other. And then more importantly, how to uh, get back and build a, you know, build a, a good ecosystem to help each other. Um, we got a new chapter. We have a Wisconsin chapter launched in February, and it was a great event. And um, I would like to have the Wisconsin president and the board member, Barbara, and my new stand-up just to, you know, so we can recognize you. So I have to tell you, when I heard Wisconsin going to form a chapter, I'm excited because somebody wanted to form a chapter. But but I was thinking, I do a Green Bay search, Appleton search, you know, um, you know, hundred thousand people in Green Bay and then seventy thousand in Appleton. I was thinking maybe if they have a their first kickoff event, they can get like 20, 25 people. I consider it a success. Okay, all right. But then I land the airport, got picked up go there and turn out to be like 55, 60 people there. And the mayor of you know, Green Bay was kicking off. They did a wonderful job. I was so impressed. Storm. There was a snowstorm that night. Okay. That's true too, that's true. And they all come out. So those of you talk about heat, how hot it is, I don't want to hear it. Just show up, okay? <laughs> um, for that being said, I just want to thank you. Enjoy the, the rest of the evening and we have a great keynote and uh, tomorrow we're going to have a great program. Thank you again for being part of the you know, our conference. Thank you. Thank you, Jason. And welcome from Wisconsin. Uh, hopefully, this isn't the first time you've been in Phoenix and realize it's over 110 almost every day. <laughs> Next, I would like to invite Erica Castro, uh, Supplier Diversity Program Manager from Salt, Ra uh, Salt River Project, to give us a, some corporate remarks as a representative of one of the corporate sponsors for a cell. Good evening, everyone. I'm Erica Castro, and I do manage our supplier diversity program at SRP. It's great to be with all of you. I love the energy in the room. First, I'd like to thank the terrific team uh, with the Excel group um, for making this conference happen. And for this amazing opportunity that we have tonight to engage and to learn from the U.S. Small Business Administration. Like, what a great opportunity, and this is just, you know, amazing for any entrepreneurs or people who want to become entrepreneurs, what a great opportunity because there's so much happening, right, at the federal, state, and local government that is helping support not just um, professionals, but engaging in business. So that's really, really exciting that um, Jason was able to, to bring um, an amazing speaker. Excel's commitment to supporting education and elevating the Asian American community and the Pacific Islander community through professional development and personal development is truly inspiring. I am privileged here tonight to represent SRP. So for those of you that don't know or may live in opposite side of where we serve, we're a public water and power utility serving the valley. Uh, we primarily serve kind of the East Valley, we serve um, some areas of the West Valley, but if you're kind of in the North Phoenix area, you probably would uh, pay your utility bill to uh, our partner utility EPS. With that in mind, um, I will say that we, are, how, we have been so privileged to be supporters of Excel for such a long time. Um, and Jason will tell you that, you know, when he came to SRP, years ago with this idea, right, to launch this organization, SRP was on board. And we've always continued that commitment to the community 
not just for personal development, but it also impacts our employees, right? Our employees live and work in this community just like all of you. Working together for the common good is, a, is at the heart of SRP's mission. We were founded by community members who came together to secure a reliable supply of water to ensure the valley could grow and thrive. And I'm gonna go off script, but I don't know if you all knew, but Ari SRP was actually founded before, SRP, or before Arizona became a state. So if you didn't know that, SRP is here and we've been here before Arizona became Arizona, and that is why we are so ingrained in this community. Given what we have all experienced through the last couple of years, through the pandemic and the continuing social unrest, Excel's work is even more critical and this conference is the perfect avenue and it's never been more important than today. We've all seen how investing in our community and using our collective knowledge, skills, and shared experiences and experiences benefit us all. At SRP, we are striving to achieve a workplace and supply chain in my role that is diverse and equitable. On that note, we are putting our money where our mouth is. We are gonna be hosting a panel tomorrow, not just with SRP, but with Arizona Utilities. So if you haven't seen it, come check it out tomorrow morning. I believe it's at 1040. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but we are collaborating with other Arizona Utilities to talk about the many, many opportunities that we have existing in our supply chains for small business owners and entrepreneurs. So we're really excited to be able to offer that. Our, we strive to give our employees a true sense of belonging and one that provides also opportunities to small businesses, as I've mentioned. And for me, it's also personal. Coming from a member of Arizona's minority community, I am personally invested in, making, in ensuring that we make meaningful change for all of our communities, because your community is my community. By leading SRP supplier diversity efforts, my team gets to create change every day by providing small and minority business owners the opportunity to work with us. SRP also has an active uh, employee resource group, Asian Interest Network. They work hand in hand and create meaningful programming for our members of the Asian American Pacific Islander community and allies. They are often involved with Excel in activities serving in various capacities, either through mentorship, volunteering, or as attendees. Thank you all for the work that you do. At SRP, we, great, we greatly value our long partnership with Excel, and we congratulate you for an amazing conference and for this wonderful evening of celebration. Thank you very much. Thank you, Erica. Well, on behalf of Asian corporate and entrepreneur leaders, Excel or Excel, depending on what word you want to use at the time, uh, we would like to welcome you all tonight to tonight's welcome reception. Um, I'm Tony King. I'm a partner at uh, Snell & Wilmer. Uh, I represent a bunch of different clients in litigation matters, uh, which I'm sure you don't particularly care about. But I am your MC tonight, and so that is what I plan on doing for you all tonight. Before we go on with the rest of the program, I would like to share with you some housekeeping items. As a courtesy, please turn off your cell phones to silent um, or so that you, know, you don't get any uh, rings. Uh, but throughout the night, please feel free to use your cell phone to take pictures, videos, and uh, post them on social media. You know, whether you want to do it on Instagram or Snapchat or Facebook, assuming anybody even uses that anymore. Uh, Tinder, whatever, whatever you guys want. Whatever you want. Um, is that, do people do, I don't know. Anyways, uh, but if you do, whatever you post up to, uh, please use the hashtag uh, uh, Excelling2023, A-C-E-L-I-N-G 2023, and see if we can get that um, microscopically trending in Phoenix somehow. Uh, so with that said, we have a wonderful evening of celebration tonight, honoring our excellence in mentorship, class 25 graduates. Um, in 2008, Excel started the first mentorship class, and the first class graduated in January of 2009. 
14 years later, many of them are continuing the mission and demonstrating leadership in their respective communities. I would like to welcome Alamir Atero, uh, CELS Phoenix's Vice President of Mentorship. She currently serves as a Director of Higher Education Init Initiatives as the Council for Adult and Experiential Learning, where she works with clients spanning from education, workforce boards, employers, nonprofits, and government agencies to connect learning to career pathways. Let's give uh, Alamir a, a round of applause, please. Excellence in Mentorship Program, otherwise abbreviated as AIM program, is a tremendous point of pride for Excel. As Excel continues to grow, the mentorship team has worked tirelessly to provide the structure for mentorship, um, pairs to accomplish their goals, and connect them to opportunities um, later in life. Uh, these programs uh, provide opportunities for individuals to work with someone already successful in a similar field or background and take their professional and personal skills uh, to the next level. The program provides mentees the resources, connections, and support to more quickly and easily reach their goals. And mentors find their own lives enriched as they pace, uh, pass on the legacy of their hard-earned wisdom and help others reach their greatest potential. Not only that, the AIM program is often an individual's first introduction to Excel. We're grateful to have had so many mentees and mentors not only participate in and grow from the program throughout the years, but to have them as active members and supporters of Excel today. Tonight, you will hear from a variety of current and past participants as they share their mentorship experience. Hopefully, that will encourage you to either apply for the next mentorship cycle or invite someone you know who may be interested to apply. And Jessica will share a little bit about that later on. At this time, I would like to invite my fellow Class 25 mentorship committee members to help me honor this year's graduates. As well, uh, could I also have the graduates please come towards the stage? Graduating class, may I please ask you to stand in line, alphabetical order, starting with mentors. <laughs> We can get started. Um, as I call your name, please step up to Nina. She'll hand you your certificate. Walk across the stage, and you'll take a beautiful picture with Alamir and Izzy over here. Awesome. Well, thank you, everyone. Uh, I'm going to announce the mentors first. First one up is Aparna Bavle. Karan Chenani. Kenja Hassan. Jane Kwa, Jack Liu, Michelle Lepuski, Catherine Prophet, and Evan Sackerson, our mentors of class of 25. Give a moment for the mentors to <laughs> take their picks.
And now I would like to honor the mentees of class 25, starting with Fred Amador. Christopher Gimler. Timothy Conan. Dustin Natty. Elias Nelson. Kevin Pagsillian. David Strait. And Tyler Yerkovich. All right, let's give all of our mentors and mentees a little round of applause. Congratulations to the class of two that, uh, tw uh, class 25 of the Excellence in Mentorship Program. While each and every graduate accomplished many goals and milestones during their 10-month commitment, we would like to recognize the mentor and mentee who went above and beyond the expectations of the program. Please join me in welcoming Gerald Bohulo, uh, Bohulano, excuse me, Class 24's Mentor of the Year recipient, who will be presenting the Class of tw Class 25's Mentor of the Year. How's everybody doing? Oh, you guys can do better than that. How's everybody doing? All right, it's an honor to be here. I'm Gerald Bohulano. I'm a Corporate Communications Manager for Blue Cross Blue Shield of Arizona. Um, I was last year's Mentor of the Year and 2016's Mentee of the Year. Um, I'm so excited to be here. I look forward to this event every year. Uh, mentorship is something that's really important to me. I wouldn't be where I am today without the Excel Mentorship Program. Uh, my mentor was actually Dr. Kenja Hassan who's in the back of the room. Hi, Kenja. And I encourage each and every one of you to either apply to be a mentor or apply to be a mentee. Um, through SL, I became a news reporter for the Filipino channel. I became an actor. And just recently, Kim Ho got me on the board for the Herberger Theater. And if it weren't for SL and surrounding yourselves with people who align with your values, I wouldn't be where I am today. So I will let them play a video to announce who this year's mentor of the year is. Congratulations on winning Mentor of the Year. I am grateful for the opportunity to be introduced to yourself and have you as my mentor throughout the past year. I'm grateful for the advice, the opportunities, and encouragement that you've given me. Uh, thank you for meeting with me each and every week in person, on Zoom, accommodating your schedule. I know that you're a busy man, so I'm uh, truly grateful for everything you've done for me in the past year, and you are absolutely deserving of this award. So let's give a round of applause to Jack Liu, the recipient of this year's class 25 Mentor of the Year.
Yeah, I'll say a couple words. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you for this honor. Um, this is totally unexpected. And I'll, you know, what, what I'll say first is that Tyler made it really easy. I mean, he made it really easy for me to shine, to be honest. Um, you know, when I met Tyler, what, 10 plus months ago for the first time, um, that conversation, that first initial conversation that we had, I think sparked the rest of it and it set the tone for this, uh, you know, for the relationship that we've um, cultivated. And what I saw in Tyler was just something special. Um, he did remind me a lot of my young self, but even better, like his drive, his um, passion, his relentless pursuit to be better, to make himself better, I think is, um, you know, a lot of it is just in his DNA. And um, uh, his mom, Michelle, is here today, but, um, which probably had a lot to do with that, you know, being surrounded by, um, you know, hardworking uh, and brilliant people um, growing up, I think had a lot to do with it. And again, it just made my, you know, mentorship tasks very easy. Um, Tyler and I connected from the start. Um, we're more than just mentee, mentor. We've become good friends. And so, um, you know, I think, uh, you know, this is a testament also to just the, uh, the, the AIM program itself, you know, over the course of 20, we're in the 26th, oh, starting the 27th cohort, I guess. Um, let me recognize Kim Ho back here. Um, you know, this wouldn't have happened without your insight and pairing, obviously. Um, you know, oftentimes you have individuals that uh, have the right intentions and have the right mindset, but if you don't click as a, a pairing, as a mentor, a mentee pairing, it just doesn't work. And I think Kim, knowing both Tyler and me, well enough to know that this is just, you know, this was a pairing that was just going to work. So appreciate that. Thank you, everybody. All right, I'll give it back to MC. Thank you, everybody. Great, thank you. Congratulations again. Let's give, uh, let's, let's give Jack another round of applause. I would like to invite Jasmine Cole, class of 20, class 24's Mentee of the Year recipient, to present this year's Mentee of the Year. Well, I don't know how to come and beat Gerald or Jack's speech or Tyler's video. Um, I should also probably thank Kim too because she brought me into this program as well. So she's doing really good at recruiting, Jason. Um, so my name is Jasmine Cole. I'm the Associate Chief of Staff of Evolved MD. And I'm currently serving as the Mentorship Chair for Cohort 26. That's going on right now. And I was a mentee for Cohort 24. Um, I dragged my fiance into this cohort who just graduated. And so I am obviously a huge fan of the AIM program. And I really hope that you guys continue to spread the word, either apply, become a mentor, or encourage people to um, become a mentee. Um, so let's see, where am I? Did I just have to flip it? Okay, never done this before. Uh, <laughs> uh, so I'm happy to present the Class 25's Mentee of the Year Award. Um, and to just talk a really bit about mentorship, I'm a huge proponent in the power of mentorship. I craved it ever since I was young. I've seeked it out, I've gone through programs, I'm currently in another program, and I'm still really close with my current mentor um, through ASL. We actually had breakfast the other day, and she says, hi, Evelyn Kasuga, if any of you guys know her. Um, so, really, mentorship means, it means so much, and I don't think that there's ever a negative experience. Even if someone says, oh, I had a mentor, and they showed me like what I didn't want. Okay, well, cool, that showed you what you didn't want, right? There's never a negative experience that I've ever heard of um, tied to mentorship. So, continue to pay it forward, and personally, I 
would love to become a mentor of the year and follow in Gerald's uh, footsteps. Right now I'm going through as Venti, mentorship chair, then Jason, I'll apply to be a mentor. <laughs> Um, but enough about me, I want to go ahead and um, let the video play for who the mentee of this year is. Good evening, Asel. I hope everyone's doing well and that you're enjoying your evening so far. You know, when we talk about our respective journeys, be it personal or professional or both, there's often a silent, consistent rhythm that pushes us forward in for our goals, our heartbeat. That heartbeat symbolizes the unwavering spirit of dedication, the form of passion, and the drive to be a better version of ourselves and the people we were yesterday. Well, if there were ever a heartbeat that echoes resilience and passion and dedication, it's in the chest of our mentee of the year, Mr. Elias Nelson. Alas, it's been an absolute pleasure being your mentor in this program. This award isn't just about your journey over the past year. It's a celebration of your outstanding achievements and the boundless adventures ahead, all guided by the heart beating in your chest. Congratulations, Elias. Here's to the journey ahead, and may your heart be inspired many more. Here, why don't you get that in the picture, too? that video um, I'm not great with awards so I'll just say that uh, ever since I met uh, Jason through an old friend um, Sam Castro I've just felt very invited um, every networking event um, anytime that I've um, whether it's Paul Amir um, or Evan anyone that I've dealt with a lot you know, I've always felt very welcome, uh, Jessica as well. Um, so I would say that if you're on the fence of joining the program, anyone in here, or looking to, you know, level up in the program, go from the mentee mentor, uh, you know, I plan on sticking around for a while. Um, and I'd say my my relationship with Evan, uh, he's he's been so great to me, just uh, very accessible. I don't know what the guidelines are for communication, but uh, I feel like I texted him quite a bit, so. <laughs> um, and I would say, you know, for me, I moved to Arizona from Washington State a couple of years ago, and, you know, hopping into a new career, going from the nonprofit world to finance, uh, I wasn't really sure how to navigate, and Evan had a similar story, just switching careers, and he was really there for me, uh, just encouraged me, he's very charismatic, uh, just a, a great friend, and um, I know that we'll continue to be great friends for the foreseeable future. So, thank you. Great, thank you. Let's give it up again for the excellence in mentorship, mentor, and mentee of the year. Great to hear some of your stories and your inspiring words on the respective uh, mentorship pairings. Uh, to close out the mentorship component of our program, I would like to welcome back Jessica Tran, the chair, the chair for the upcoming cohort 27. Thank you, Tony, and congratulations.
congratulations again to the recipients of the Mentor and Mentee of the Year, and congrats to the graduation class. Um, I guess my picture's up there, so I'll kind of introduce myself a little bit. Um, my name is Jessica Tran. I have been involved with Excel for about nine years on and off. Um, I am a software engineer at Slack, so I work from home. So this is a lot of people for me on a regular day, but it's been great all evening. Uh, for, those of you, for those of you who don't know, the Excellence in Mentorship program has two classes running concurrently throughout the year. With this class graduating, we have another cohort starting up next month. I've had the benefit of seeing the mentorship program from all sides as a mentee, a mentor, a relationship manager for this cohort, and now chair. And we are continuously working to improve the mentorship experience. If you or anyone you know are interested in being a mentee or a mentor in our next class, the application is deadline is August 31st, which is a week from today. Please do not hesitate to come find me or any ASL board member after the program or to contact us if, after this evening if you have any questions. Also, if you have the conference booklet, you should be able to scan the QR code in the image on the screen and it will link you to where to find more information. And yeah, thank you again and uh, congratulations everybody who graduated. Thank you, Jessica. And Slack is a fantastic app too. I didn't mean to, you know, suggest you can post in Slack as well. Although, um, with the way that the app works, I don't know if it's it's going to go to uh, a ton of people. But, um, <laughs> well, you know, it it it's uh, it depends on what your audience is in that uh, app. All right. Well, thank you again. Uh, as everybody's saying, please, if you are interested in being a mentor or a mentee, sign up for Excel's uh, program. Uh, but for now, I'd like to introduce and welcome uh, Stan Vaidya. I, I swear I did this multiple times and I did it seamlessly. Vaidyanathan. Vaidyanathan, excuse me. Snaya is a sophomore at ASU studying biomedical sciences in Tempe, Arizona. She has been learning. I did not ask her how to pronounce this. Um, Bharatanatyam from Guru Kalarashi Asha Gopal, the founder and director of Arathi School of Dance for the past five years. And prior to that, she learned from Divya Prabhakar for six and a half years. She is currently pursuing her biomedical sciences degree at ASU and hopes to enter the medical field. Staya is currently working as an emergency medicine medical scribe at Honor Health, providing documentation assistance for providers. The, the piece that Snaya will be performing today depicts Lord Ganesha, famously known as the Elephant God. In this dance, Snaya will highlight Lord Ganesha's features, such as his big ears and wide stomach. In, a baratran in this repertoire, most dancers start with a piece dedicated to Lord Ganesha to wish them luck and prosperity for the rest of their dance performance. So let's give a big round of applause this night.
Anybody ever seen anything like that before? That was pretty amazing, huh? Fantastic. Well, um, I was asked to stall for about five minutes. <laughs> I know I'm a lawyer, but I just play it straight with you. I'm very transparent. I'm an honest person. So, 
We're going to do our best here to get through the next four minutes without being too awkward about it. Um, anyways, uh, a little bit more about myself. I have been involved with Excel for several years. Uh, I'm sure if you've been to an event, I've probably emceed it or shown up in some fashion. And uh, Jason is now giving me a thumbs up, so that's fantastic. So, any Excel event would not be complete without a keynote speaker to inspire and uh, fuel your passions for leadership and personal development. So tonight, we are honored to have Dlaiwar Syed, Deputy Administrator of the Small Business Administration. Uh, Mr. Syed comes to the SBA from the State Department, where he championed American businesses as special representative for commercial and business affairs. As the State Department's top commercial diplomat, Deputy Administrator Syed advocated for U.S. companies to compete and win abroad and helped ensure U.S. competitive, competitiveness in markets across the globe. In this role, he mobilized the private sector to support the people of Ukraine in the wake of Russia's invasion and advocated for commercial deals in strategic sectors such as aviation and defense, energy and technology. Before joining the Biden administration, Syed was CEO at Lumiata, an AI healthcare company focused on reducing healthcare costs and improving patient outcomes. Previously, Mr. Sayed was president at the software company Freshworks. Earlier in his career, he oversaw business operations for Yahoo's platforms and infrastructure and was a product man manager at Cybel Systems and SAP. He has driven civic efforts at the federal, state, and local level, focusing on economic growth and entrepreneurship. As the founding chair of the California Entrepreneurship Task Force and the Governor's Office of Business and Economic Development, he promoted inclusive entrepreneurship. He served on President Obama's White House Commission on Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders and chaired the White House Initiative on AAPI's Economic Growth Committee. In that role, he led the administration's engagement with small businesses across the United States after the passage of the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act of 2009. In 2020, Syed was tapped by San Jose, California Mayor Sam Licardo to help lead Silicon Valley's pandemic economic recovery as a member of the Silicon Valley Recovery Roundtable. Please join me in welcoming Deputy Administrator Dwilar Syed. Thank you so much. Great to be here and uh, first of all let me thank uh, Jason and the entire team for giving me the opportunity to speak to you. I want to congratulate Jack and Elias for role modeling mentorship, both from a mentor and a mentee standpoint. Um, and I want to use this opportunity uh, to share with you my perspective on uh, what we are seeing in this world as we speak in the country as well at an extraordinary moment and how do we respond to this time, both as a government, but also as people, as leaders. And very importantly, what do we need to do to make sure that U.S. leaders and entrepreneurs and professionals uh, are best enabled to respond to this moment. And my perspective that I'm sharing with you as you heard about my bio will be informed both uh, from my experience as a public servant now but it will be equally informed by my experience as an entrepreneur for more than 25 years. So this moment that we're experiencing, um, that you know, all of us in this room have experienced, uh, is, is genuinely an extraordinary time. And there are three things that make it uh, extraordinary. Number one, the global pandemic that we all just experienced and literally every single human being on this planet was affected by it. And we cover, we are still in recovery mode, but we have seen the impact of that pandemic. That was obviously millions of lives lost, a huge disruption to economy, small businesses. And again, something like this, we haven't seen impact the world since the Spanish uh, flu outbreak of 1918. So almost once in a hundred year phenomenon. 
And sometimes the normalcy of these rooms and the fact that we all come together without worrying about wearing a mask make us uh, feel like we have moved on, but that was, those were harder times for many of us. Again, something we haven't seen and experienced in a very, very long time. Second, war in the heart of Europe. You referred to it that I joined the State Department actually just two weeks before Putin invaded Ukraine. Unprovoked. And in the early days of, of my role, and I had just joined government full time for the first time in my career, my work became supporting the Secretary, Secretary of State Blinken on mobilizing the private sector to support the people of Ukraine. By the way, I have never seen in my entire civic career the groundswell of support that emerged from our country, from the private sector, but also from our communities. We haven't seen hostilities in Europe of this nature since the end of World War II. Let me just let this sink in. I don't think anyone expected, and we still don't know how long this will go on. Okay, in a phenomenon, one out of, one, uh, one sort of 75 years. And three, climate change. I don't think um, it's a, 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 an abstract conversation anymore. We are seeing the impact of climate change everywhere, whether it's extreme heat in this region in Phoenix, or the devastation and the tragedy that we've seen in Maui. I was in Hawaii last week, and I can tell you that what you see on TV does not measure up to what's happening to those communities. Hundreds of life lost. We still do not know the final count. And these are brothers and sisters from our AABI and NHPI communities. It is heart wrenching. And we know those hurricane winds just, you know, made those flames so, so devastating. And, and you see these kinds of extreme weather causing extreme destruction across the country, across the planet. And uh, it's only going to accelerate. And for anyone who doubts, we should remind that the climate change is real. Uh, again, a phenomena that, you know, frankly, the humanity hasn't seen in a very long time, perhaps once in a million years. So when you look at these challenges, whether it's the pandemic, or geopolitical events in Europe, or the climate change, the, you know, the, the, this makes this moment genuinely extraordinary. So we are not living in ordinary times. I'm just trying to emphasize that point. Because once in a while, the daily motions of lives make us feel like we're just moving on. We are not. So how do we respond to this time? How do we respond to this moment? Um, so our view is, my view is that our response as a government, as people, as communities, as leaders have to be as rigorous and as extraordinary as this moment itself. And I'm proud to say as a member of the President Biden's administration that our response as an administration has been rigorous. So if you see what we did last year, in the year 2022, the industrial policy that the President passed, and much of it through bipartisan legislation, we have not seen that kind of uh, investment rolled out since the New Deal. Let me remind again, let me say again, since the New Deal. Between the bipartisan Chips and Science Act, the bipartisan infrastructure bill, and the IRA, we are investing uh, at a level that we haven't seen in 75, 80 years. We are building industries of the future in the country. Bringing back manufacturing, semiconductor. You see the impact right here in Arizona in semiconductor. In northern Nevada, we're building lithium loop. By the way, the only place that I visited uh, Reno, outside Reno, just a couple of months ago, a few months ago when I was at the State Department, this is the only place in, in, on planet Earth where within 300 miles, we're extracting lithium, processing lithium, building uh, uh, lithium batteries, and delivering it to Tesla's Gigafactory and others in the same region, 300 mile radius. And we just did it here in part because of this president's you know, uh, uh, investment plan, investing in infrastructure. So that's the kind of impact we are doing as a government, building industries in the future, making sure that we are ready for, God forbid, the next pandemic or a major supply chain disruption or dislocation or a geopolitical event that comes in our way. Now, what's the response as people? as entrepreneurs. This is obviously a room full of leaders, uh, a room full of uh, change makers. And, you know, I come from business to this role, and my ask would be that for those of you who are in business, for those of you who are entrepreneurs, think big. 
uh, think about solving problems that can have a genuinely societal impact, that can help us tackle global challenges. And I was talking to our team here in um, Arizona, and we were talking about a company called Source. How many of you have heard of Source? It's a homegrown, Shivani has it. So a few of you, well, check them out. Uh, source, uh, previously called Zero Mass, right? Um, actually takes, use hydroplanes to condense moisture from the atmosphere and put them in water tanks and provide clean, fresh drinking water where there is none. And you know, there are many, many communities around the world, including in our own country, where we don't have fresh, clean water. That's a brilliant idea. And that's the kind of rigor we need to respond to this moment, where there are global challenges where we can solve them by having these kind of innovation that can solve us, help us solve, uh, uh, help us tackle global problems. Second, think about serving. Um, I'm actually somebody who uh, made a decision, deliberate decision, to pursue public service. Um, I've had a career um, which was still in full swing. I was building a healthcare AI companies. Um, before ChatGPT became uh, a phenomenon that it is right now. Um, but I felt that this moment compelled me to do my part and jump in and serve the country. You know, our government needs people of all backgrounds. It needs the business and operating DNA to make sure we can modernize and make sure that the government is relevant for this day and age. And uh, some of the work I did under President Obama's administration on the AAPI Commission to this day is helping me last week when I was in Hawaii to connect with Native Hawaiian communities because I worked on those issues. So it is important, so I would, cons I would request that those of you who can consider joining a border commission or pursuing service uh, because we could certainly use your perspective. And of course, representation also matters. It makes government more inclusive, more responsive, so it can reflect the aspirations of all our people. Now the big question is, how do we enable you? How do we make sure that you can do all this, whether you do this as a private sector leader or you come to public service? And Jason and team had especially asked me to share some of those, um, um, if you will, uh, advice. So number one, uh, do what you're doing right here. These networks matter. You know, actually my start in my career on the civic side happened via community organizing through very similar platforms. The relationships that you're forming here, hopefully you are, I'm sure you are, are going to pay huge dividends and hopefully they are non-transactional relationships. People who will have your back when there are down days, and there are more down days in both private life and public life than there are up days, who will give you trusted advice, who will help open doors for you for no quid pro quo, for no expectation. You need those relationships. They're the single biggest uh, ingredient for success for you to be able to punch at this level to make that kind of system. So I hope you're forming the relationships, both on the receiving end and the giving end. Second, mentorship. So it's great that Jack and Elias are, are role modeling for us the importance of mentorship. Um, it, look, um, in so many things you do, in my career when I built software products, when I was doing AI products, when I was hiring sales reps, there was no playbook. The playbook was the advice that I got from somebody else. And that is absolutely precious. And again, hopefully in a non-transactional way. And third, and this is something that I've come to now appreciate even more as I'm in public service, continuous learning, constant learning, intellectual curiosity. You know, I ran this AI company three and a half years ago. Six months ago, ChatGPT emerges on the, on the global phenomenon, becomes part of a lexicon. We have to constantly stay on top of what's coming. And there's one individual that who actually inspires me in terms of how much learning he has done is someone like Bill Gates, right? Who, we know him as the software uh, maker, as the Microsoft co-founder. But today, the next generation knows him as a philanthropist knows him as somebody who is a specialist in endemic diseases because he has steeped himself in learning and knowledge of a whole new domain that had nothing to do with what he did 30, 40 years ago. And so there are many examples of people who pursue learning, who continue to learn, and they become relevant for new moments to respond to these moments. 
Now, obviously, I want to make sure to talk about SBA as well for a little bit as to how we can enable you uh, to help you meet this moment as an entrepreneur. So first, um, let me ask you, for those of you who are in small business or business small business owner or work for small business companies, uh, have you considered or have you worked with SBA? Uh, if you could show. So that's partly why I'm here to change that. Next time when we come, there should be at least all of you saying that. And then we have local leaders here, Shivani, who runs our, uh, helps run our local district office. Um, so let me say this. Um, SBA, I think, came to the forefront during the pandemic years. We processed more than a trillion dollar of COVID relief through PPP loans and IDOL. And we delivered them through both administrations, President Trump's and President Biden's, in a matter of days and months. And I can tell you, for had it not been for that relief, we would be in a very, very different place. And just to give you a sense of scale, that more than a trillion dollars that went to our small businesses all over the country, that was 10x uh, the scale of what SBA normally processes in its conventional loans. So our amazing men and women public servants stepped up and they delivered uh, that in the middle of a pandemic and often themselves they were affected by the pandemic. Now we are building on the momentum. During that time we formed more than 11 million new customer relationships. Almost every second business you know, almost your local restaurant, your direct email that you go to, uh, you know, even a tech startup that you may have engaged with benefited from SBA loans. We are now building on that customer touch point that we formed, 11 million plus in the country to make sure that we can help them, make them exposed to our broader services. A couple of things that I want to talk about especially. One, we are democratizing access to capital to make sure that there are more SBA-backed lenders who can give you access to capital, especially in communities that are underserved and that are under-resourced. Uh, as an example, we just recently lifted a moratorium, a 41-year-old moratorium that was actually put in place in President Reagan's administration on the number of what we call small business lending companies, or SBLCs, that can be backed by SBA. There are only 14 allowed in the entire union. 41 years later, we are now going to be able to open more. A lot of times, you know, this, uh, this kind of work doesn't get in the news or you don't see it, but the quiet work of reforms that we have done under this administrator or this administration is pretty breathtaking. So we are, we are making these changes to open up more capital, to drive more competition with lenders backed by SBA. So more of you, especially if you're in front of some community, can actually benefit from SBA resources. Secondly, federal contracting. I just spoke about with some of you. Um, the United States government is the largest customer in the world. Let me repeat that. The US government is the largest purchaser of goods and services in the world. It spends $650 billion a year from defense to health to transportation and you name it. And the president has made it a priority that he wants 15% of that spend to go towards socially disadvantaged small businesses. 15%. It's an ambitious target. And last year, we were tracking around 12%. So my feet are going to be held on fire if we don't meet that target. And in order for us to meet that target, we need to make sure that more of you get familiar with that program. It's called AA certification. Um, and so SBA is there to help you as well. Get familiarized with the process. It does take, it's a process. It takes time, but I think the dividends are worth it. Um, I'm bringing this up because, again, we need you and your creative potential to help us also when it comes to the federal contracting. Uh, now, in order for this to happen, obviously, we are here, and I only saw a couple of hands raised when I said if you work with SBA, um, and of course, we can do more in terms of outreach, but I will also say to you, it goes both ways. It goes both ways. Um, we also need you to reach it. This is also your government. A public good is only as relevant um, as the benefit it actually delivers. So we can have all the programs, we can have all the targets, we can do all the outreach, and if people don't engage, 
we are not developing on that. So we also need you to reach back in. So we have a team here, Shivani is here, I hope you get to see her and exchange information. Thank you again for the opportunity uh, to be here. Um, going back to what I started with, this is a special time. But I also think we have the resources, we have the investments, both from our administration. Uh, we also have incredible potential here to hopefully think big, uh, build on these relationships that you're forming, um, you know, uh, get access to resources that I just talked about for us to punch at its weight and uh, keep building forward. So thank you again for having me. Appreciate it. Thank you. Let's give uh, Dwar Sayed another round of applause, please. That's some great advice and great, uh, great insight. Um, we would now like to call to to the stage Acel's chairwoman of the board, Faye Ferguson, to give us some closing remarks for the e for the evening. Faye. Goodness, I can't believe we wrap up our first day and I know most of you are tired who joined us as early as 8 o'clock this morning. I also want to thank our volunteers who worked in the last five months for putting this together. Um, but as I promised, we have uh, those social media savvy. X is now there on the list too. Tony. Oh yeah, X. <laughs> X, Instagram, Facebook. <laughs> Yes. Um, Veronica Van. Do we have Veronica Van? Tanga? Jasmine, cool. Come on over, you get something from Walmart and Hallmark. <laughs> Sylvia Kapir. They're all tired, they went home. Jessica Sam. That's all, I'm gonna reach out to them. Again, I wanna thank you all um, for having a successful first day and um, drive home safe tonight and we'll see you all tomorrow. Have a good night. Thank you, Faye. That concludes our evening or our program for the evening. Good night.